A late November US briefing saying Patriot Sams are being considered for Ukraine started a flurry of will they, one day rumors, which reached a crescendo lately with major media outlets reporting about a possible imminent US decision to send Patriot Sam systems to Ukraine. What is known is that on December 18th, Ukraine's President Zelensky said he's personally involved in the ongoing process of acquiring the Patriot. Washington Post then reported that a senior US official confirmed Patriot is to be sent. Allegedly, Ukraine will get one Patriot battery. It would likely be one of the US Army's own batteries. The Patriot can't be used right away by the Ukrainian crews, so select crews will likely be brought from Ukraine to Germany for a crash training course. A single Patriot battery is usually operated by 80 or so soldiers. It's plausible the training course might take up to two months, so the battery might be operational by spring. Training is crucial as the US and Ukraine want not just that the battery be lethal, but also to survive. While it's not known which Patriot variant might the US send, it would make sense that it's not just the Pack 2 variant. Latest baseline for that variant is GEM+, Plus, now 20 years old. It's likely US doesn't even have such systems in its active use anymore. While the US could perhaps send some of the stored and conserved Patriot batteries, those might still need work done on them to reach operational status. But the mainstay of US Patriot systems is its PAC-3 variant. While the baseline is also 20 years old now, the latest variant, MSE, has been in service since 2016. It has to be pointed out that the older missiles can still be used with the new models. So a MSC Patriot battery can, for example, mix and match Pack 2 and MSC missiles. Besides the new radar, which enabled more effective interceptions, the Pack 3 and MSC models bring new missiles better suited to Ukraine's needs. While smaller and of shorter reach than its predecessor, the Pack 3 is tailor-made for greater maneuverability and greater precision, making the system much more potent against enemy ballistic missiles and good against cruise missiles. Of course, various drones and manned aircraft can still be engaged. It's just that the maximum range against such targets is shorter. The US Army embarked on a big Patriot modernization program in 2017. By today, it's likely all the units feature the newest build of its potent radar. While most potent, the MSC missile might not be sent in great numbers to Ukraine though. The US production is only ramping up and the US itself doesn't have many of them. Each one is quite expensive, at over $4 million. MSC's predecessor, the Baseline Pack 3 missile, was produced in similar numbers, though a small number of those have already been used up. But the US would be more likely to part ways with those missiles instead, as they should still be more than good for intercepting Russian missiles and munitions. While Patriot is potent, it would also be vulnerable in Ukraine, potentially more so than other SAM systems. Part of that is the fact it's a high-profile system, touted in the media, and there's gonna be a small number of those, unlike the greater number of S-300 systems, making it a unique PR target for Russia, which might go out of its way to try to find it and neutralize it. The other part is the fact it was designed to work for the US Army doctrine. It's not particularly mobile. It needs about a half an hour or more to be set up. Other equivalent modern systems of today can sometimes lower that to just five minutes. For the US Army, that is not an issue, as the US Air Force would make sure there aren't any enemy planes hunting for the SAM. But in Ukraine, that would not be the case. Russia does have anti-radar missiles which outrange Patriot. It could patrol along Ukraine's borders or the front line and still cover most of Ukraine, while not putting its planes in too much risk. Russia would ideally wait for Ukraine to turn on that Patriot's radar, and then hope that it would have a good Elend plane around, which would try to geolocate those radar emissions, and then also to have a fighter jet with a missile in the air, ready to pounce. But Russia doesn't have that many quality Elend planes. It's not assured it would have enough to keep a few in the air, 24-7, on all the Ukrainian fronts. Still, by fighting against missile strikes, Ukraine is likely to turn on their Patriot radar, and Russia might be waiting. Alternatively, the Patriot unit might be discovered by a satellite. While Russia doesn't have many spy satellites, it could still get lucky and spot the unit. The Patriot battery has many components, and they usually take up a sizable area on a flat piece of land. It's plausible a deployed unit could be spotted. While some units do get redeployed, they still can't be moving every hour or so, as that would render them ineffective. 
Russia's added problem is that they have shown they need days, if not a week, to perform a strike based on their satellite imagery. They have been trying to speed up their command and kill chain, but it remains to be seen if they can pull off a strike within mere hours. Especially since the strike would need to be quite large, involving many missiles so they can overpower the Patriot battery itself. A battery has between 4 and 8 launchers, with each launcher having either 4 pack 2 missiles, 16 pack 3 missiles or 12 MSC missiles. As mentioned, missiles can be mixed on a single launcher. In theory, a battery with 2 pack 2 launchers and 4 pack 3 launchers might have 72 ready to fire missiles to defend itself. Pack 3 and MSC missiles can be fired in greater numbers at once as they are self guided to the target, not relying as much on the battery's radar. Plus, it's very likely the Patriot battery would have additional assets around it, like perhaps Avenger SAM systems with Stinger missiles, still a decent protection against cruise missiles, or a few anti aircraft artillery pieces, which might engage several air munitions during the attack. While the anti-radar missiles are faster and harder to intercept, even a certain number of those would likely be intercepted, pressuring Russia to keep perhaps even several planes in the air at any one time with a dozen anti-radar missiles, and then multiply that effort at several places around the front, all for a single attack chance. Of course, the primary use of a Patriot battery would not be being a magnet for Russian attacks, but to take down Russian missiles. Russian planes are even without Patriot, not venturing much over the front line, so they would likely not be engaged often. But protecting large industrial or infrastructure centers from missile attacks, that's something the Patriot could very much do. And if the US ends up sending more than one battery, then covering even a sizable part of Ukraine's power distribution network might be achievable. Which might be the goal of the whole deal as Patriots for Ukraine were not even mentioned until Russia started attacking electrical power infrastructure. If such a Patriot missile deal transpires, Russia might be left without one of its last means of pressure on Ukraine. Oh, and before we go, a few words from Bloodlines, Heroes of Lithos, a game sponsoring this video. It's a free-to-play hero-collecting fantasy RPG. You build up your kingdom and go to war using your champions. You can create unique champions by combining the bloodlines of elves, demons, orcs, vampires and many other races. Bloodlines can be played for free on Android and iOS. And you can get a free champion from the new Lycan clan starting December 22nd. A bink of viewers can use the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to also get a starter pack with 3 stamina potions, 100k gold and 100 diamonds.